Okay, welcome back to Steps of Freedom. Uh, this round, I'm not recording any of the teachings for the Miracle List, since you already have them, but we decided to record some conversations about some things that might help you with your deliverance and your healing. So today, I'm going to be talking with Renju, and she's going to help us understand how she uses the scripture binding and loosing in her prayer time. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Yeah. It's an honor. Ah, good. So, um, I've heard you pray, and I hear you uh, use this uh, binding and loosing often, and I find it a very curious and empowering, but I've also heard you say that it's the backbone of deliverance. Why is it the backbone? Because it moves all the clutter away. <laughs> okay. So, Can you explain that a little bit? So I would consider it like when you bind, you're actually um, holding everything that's holding back deliverance. Any, whatever interferences the enemy has, you're holding, you're, by, you're using your authority to incapacitate those spirits that are in the way mm -hmm. and binding and loosing over you, whoever is in your, your influence, in okay. your sphere of influence that you, you, you're praying for. For example, for me, it's my kids, my family. So right. How do, when I'm praying, it's just a tool I use that I have seen work so that their eyes can open to deliverance. I've, I've got deliverance, but most of our family members and people are not mm. um, open to deliverance. So by binding and loosing, you kind of like uh, facilitating mm. them come to deliverance at some point. So you're helping the Holy Spirit by activating faith and praying. Oh, good. I like that. Um, one question I think, did that answer the question? Backbone of deliverance? Yeah. What, how is it the backbone of deliverance? I think you said it's a tool of prayer. Yes. Right? And it it's going to tie up those spirits that are preventing Correct. the person from getting deliverance. Correct. Right. Okay. That's good. Now, who should we use this technique in prayer for? Who? What do you recommend? Um, <clears throat> personally, as far as the experience that I've experienced, I just use it in my sphere of influence. Okay. So it, where I have authority in my home, over my children, mm -hmm. praying for my husband, because I'm his wife, so I have some yeah. influence in his life, mm -hmm. praying over family, father, mother, I mean, sometimes I do that. Um, I don't know that I want to pray for people that I'm not involved with. We do it, and yeah. when we do a one-on-one -on -one yeah. appointment, I hear you bind and loose to this yeah. in, while we're ministering to that person. Yeah. So that's someone we have a direct contact with. Yeah. Okay. I can say a teacher over her students. Oh, yeah. Because she's in a position of authority, and she has influence over them. Mm -hmm. And parents send children over to her. Right. So if you are a godly woman and you know how to pray... <laughs> you can help those children in ways that they probably don't ever know or see. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a question about, can you bind spirits in a person who's not right in front of you? Correct. You can because you're, you're, you're praying in the spirit realm. And you're not binding the person. <laughs> you're right. freeing the person. Right. You're actually binding things that are influencing the person. Okay. And maybe opening that person's eyes and free will a little bit more to make better decisions or to see, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes their wills are bound with a mm. stubborn spirit, a rebellious spirit. And praying and binding those spirits gets them to sometimes perceive Incorporate with the Holy Spirit a little bit better. I see it working a lot in my family. Oh, that's and good. I spend time in prayer. So you do, you've seen it actually work. Correct. Hmm. Uh, I see you have some scriptures there to back up what you're saying. Would you like to share those sure. with me? So 
with binding, the first scripture would be Matthew 18, 18 to 20. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And excuse my accent. <laughs> Matthew 12, 29, it says, Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? So I, I think there's a place for binding in the scripture. Ah, yeah. I, I know there are several other scriptures on binding, but uh, it's not very um, clear sometimes to pull it out on on the concept, but uh, I just pull these two. And loosing, Isaiah 52, 2, it says, Shake yourself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, mm. O captive daughter of Zion. Um, Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, mm. to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. So, yes. I mean, that sounds like a lot of what we're saying, the backbone of deliverance. Yeah. So when we literally are binding and loosing, sometimes before a person even gets to that place, we're actually helping that person get to that place. Helping them cooperate Correct. with the process. No one can get delivered from their friends. We get right. delivered when we begin to hate what right. keeps us from being all that God has called us to be. Mm -hmm. I kind of think about it like this. If there's a spirit influencing me, and if I bind it or tie it up, it's no longer influencing me, and then I have the ability to think on my own apart from that spirit's influence. Mm -hmm. And I can make those decisions. Okay, so how have you seen it work in your personal life? Can you, can you give an example of you, um, maybe a person was acting one way and you put this type of prayer into practice and then you saw a, a result? Okay, so... It used to be a lot of arguments between me and my husband, communication issues. Mm -hmm. We both come from different cultures, so um, I, we, it almost felt like I'd speak Spanish and he'd speak <laughs> French. Or, well, those are close. Let's say Spanish and Chinese. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, it got me frustrated many years, but when I started operating and praying in tongues and actually learning how to bind and lose over him and bind those marriage breaking spirits, um, communication barrier spirits mm. that come in a way and twist my words, that um, twist his words, that I may not even hear what he's saying. You know, I began to see less and less of arguments and wow. a little bit more ease into our conversations, a little bit more peace when I took authority in my, in my home and uh, I experienced that also with my kids, mm. you know, praying over certain spirits that I, I see working in my home. Wow, that's neat. Now, earlier you were telling me about a teacher who um, used this prayer technique mm -hmm. to help her students. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me that story? Yeah, so um, when I was listening to one teaching on it, came across this that really edified my soul. Mm. It's um, a teacher had got a really bad class, had a very bad reputation. Most of these students were coming from really bad backgrounds, dysfunctional families, mm -hmm. and they had really bad grades, and they were known in the school, I guess is the bad <laughs> class of the school. So she came in, a godly woman who knew how to bind and loose, and she just kept binding what was have whatever you know the Holy Spirit led her to, and kept loosing upon these their uh, children the ability to understand, to to read, to do math, creativity, mm. you know. And um, th by the end of the year, these this particular class was at the top of all the classes in the school. Wow! So wow. prayer does have power. 
And so said, knowing those tools are so important. Oh my gosh, I feel like this is so important. Yes, you also told me that she did all this prayer work outside of being with the children. She did Correct. it in her classroom before they even got to the classroom. Correct. How often do we have to pray these binding and loosing prayers? From my understanding, because I'm still learning, <laughs> um, the scripture that says um, his mercies are new every morning, it, it dawned on me that this should be done daily. Mm -hmm. And I usually do it as soon as I get up before I talk to anybody. Okay. Because I don't want any spirit getting in my way. Right. So I take authority before I talk to anyone or have a conversation at home. So I would say daily. Okay. Yeah. And do you ever bind and loose spirits for yourself, over yourself? Yes, um, I know I, I do still struggle with fear. Sometimes I see mm. it manifest in myself. Well, Who doesn't yeah. struggle with fear? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, a car comes too close and I'm like, you know, so, or something at home or it's something I'm thinking over and I can see that I struggle sometimes in those areas. So when I, when I come to pray for people, I'm always yeah. like, Lord, I don't want this in the way. So I bind any spirits in me that I, the Holy Spirit leads me to. Okay. To. Neat. So I'm debating um, to have you demonstrate for us, <laughs> or should we share with people who are watching an actual, like, step-by-step -step how you create this type of prayer? Okay. Let's create it first. Okay, sure. So practically, so you want to get a piece of paper. All right, we're going to go to the board and write some things down. Um, so, so I wrote down the backbone of deliverance is a tool of prayer. And so if you think about the different tools that you have for prayer, binding and loosing is one of them. And we're coming from the angle of personal prayer, prayers over a person binding spirits that are operating in a select person that we know or we're in communication with or interaction with. Is that right? Okay. So let's say we have, I know my, your handwriting's better than mine, but I'll, I'm going to write. So I'll write over on this side. So binding, what, there's two, there's a positive there's a negative binding and a positive binding I see mm -hmm. you, you talk about. So it can go both ways. So binding to tie up. Correct. Okay. So binding to tie up. To mm -hmm. incapacitate. Right. Or... I'm not going to write that word. but <laughs> So to tie up a spirit, what spirits, what do we have to do first? We have to first... Identify? Correct. Okay, you first got to identify. I guess that would be a step you could write down. Just if you want to write down, like, identify. Correct. Number one, you want to identify um, what's operating in your home, let's say. Discern. Or discern. You're, what are the spirits operating in your home? And, uh, you know, who's that person that's being... Uh, what do we say? The person who's being afflicted by these spirits, right? So you might say your husband, your wife, your kid. Yeah. Think about who's that person that you're having conflict with. And then you want to identify or discern the spirits that you're fighting with, right? What, what spirits do you want to tie up? Usually you tie up, number one would be rejection. Rejection, yeah. Okay. What's another one? Rebellion. Rebellion. Which can be defiance too, right? Defiance, yeah. So on a piece of paper, you want to write down the word bind or binding, and you want to make a list of all the spirits that you see operating through that person. So rejection. How do we identify, how do we know someone has a spirit of rejection? Um, when you... When you talk to them or you correct them or say something, you're trying to point something out for their good. Mm -hmm. And 
they can't take it. They can't receive truth about it. They can't handle they, it. They, they're like, yeah, I'm bad. Yeah, I'm not good enough. That's, you know, they can't take correction or truth. Okay. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. because that's all they hear. Right. Rejection as a stronghold. It's a strong man. Okay, so that's a strong man. And rebellion, what would be, um, I think of like an attitude. Rebellion right? is I want my way. Oh, I want my way. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have my way regardless. So these are, these are some spirits. Fear, right? I heard you talk about that. Right. Fear, you know, what, what, when someone's operating out of fear, oh, I can't, oh, I'm not going to have enough money. I'm not going to, they're worried. They're nervous. They're fearful, mm -hmm. right? And that can get in the way of pr definitely husband-wife communication. Mm -hmm. um, so you make a long list, and, and you're probably going to add to the list as you get going. Now, what are some binding type of words that we would do to... Uh, bind to something the positive. positive the po a positive, right. So what okay. I do is, when I pray, I bind my children's will to the will of God. Okay, so I'm just going to write children's will to the will of God. And there's a scripture in Psalms, I don't have it at hand, but it's, I bind their feet to the paths of righteousness. I bind their feet to the paths of righteousness. I want to bind my own feet <laughs> to the paths of righteousness. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you give us one more? Holiness. Oh, I bind, Truth. I, I bind my children to holiness. <laughs> Truth. Oh, I want to do this for myself. I bind myself to holiness. I love this. Okay. So... One way of binding are spirits you want to tie up. And another one is kind of like you're tying yourself to godly we're tying, things. We're tying the negatives. Tying the negatives. Okay. And we're tying the positives. And we're tying the positives. Wow, this is good. Okay, so, so then you make this long list. Great. But then you want to loose. Right. You want to untie. Yeah. So we'll be doing the opposite of... We're going to do the positive. Oh, we're going to do the opposite. Okay. So what's the opposite for rejection? Acceptance. Acceptance. All right. Uh, love, right? Oh, yeah. Love, right? Rebellion. Rebellion. Cooperation. Obedience. Cooperation. Obedience. I like these words. I am loosing obedience over my children. How do you spell cooperation? Cooperation. Cooperation. I, I lose cooperation over my husband. Um, I am loosing. Fear. I am allowing it to go. Power. For fear, I do power, love, and a sound mind. I am loosing power, love, and a sound mind over my mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's loosing. So these are the positives. Loosing. Yeah. So. There's kind of like a negative, a dam doing damage to the enemy. Yeah, so when we are. You want to use this one instead? Yeah. That's a little darker. Probably not as, I hope you can see, but when you're loosing destruction. I loose destruction on the enemy's camp. I love that. Confusion. confusion. Yes. <laughs> I lose confusion. Chaos. I lose chaos. Uh, paralysis. I paral I lose paralysis to paralyze the enemy and his plans. His plans and his schemes. Schemes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if you were going to pray, mm -hmm. You're, you're praying. How, how, do, how, do, how do you use this to pray? So you make this list like you did. Okay. You get in war tongues. <laughs> Start in war tongues. <laughs> pray in tongues. And then you just let the Holy Spirit lead you. 
baseline is you don't do head work, but you do spirit work. Okay. So you let the Holy Spirit lead you. you, you and you use just, these words. You just use your list. He gives you like that list. You right. work with him because right. he's the one who's going to help you identify, identify, discern, and customize it. Ah, customize. I like that. Customize the list, right? He customizes it for you, for your family, for your influence, mm -hmm. for your success, for your breakthrough. Because yes. when people around you start getting breakthroughs, what does that do to you? You're right. Builds your faith. The, makes you walk with the Lord. That's great. Yes, it does. Yes, strengthens it does. You, strengthens your faith. And greater the faith, greater the miracles. <laughs> That's what we've been taught. Yeah. All right, so so can can you just pray right now, just to give us a little demonstration? Sure. All right, cover in the blood first. She always does that. I like it. Yeah, we're just gonna pray. Go ahead. So I don't even know if I do cover in the blood first, but I well, do. First, Father God, you yes. always start with Father God, so start there. So Lord, I thank you. There we go for this teaching. Help me, Holy Spirit. So. Father, I, I bind the spirit of rejection, yes. rebellion, fear. So I gotta have passion and ob and purpose. And right now, <laughs> you can add to the list, of course. <laughs> Just be flowing. So, okay, so if I'm praying for my children, all right, put that in purpose. So then I have a <laughs> an um for it. Okay, I bind rejection, rebellion, fear in my children right now. And I loose upon them acceptance. I loose upon them the spirit of obedience. I loose upon them the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Father, I bind their will to the paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I bind their will to your will, Father God. Yes, Lord. I loose destruction upon the camp of the enemy. Amen. Upon every spirit that is sent their way to, to interrupt, to to hinder their walk, to yes, hinder Lord. their choices, to hinder their will. I lose chaos and paralysis over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> cover them with the blood, Lord. And, and when your family members are ready, they're going to know, they're going to want deliverance. And then you're going to be right there to cast these things out. You've bound them, you'll know the list, and when they're ready, that person comes to you, and you can pray for them, and they start to be touched by the Holy Spirit, you can start to cast these spirits yeah, you've out. you've been doing the homework with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, you know your authority. That's another thing, is to know your authority. Right, because if you don't know your authority, they're not going to obey you. you got to know your authority. Know what mm -hmm. you're doing. And the spirits know whether you know what you're doing. And remember, spirits are persons without bodies. They're actually persons, and you can render them powerless. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for going over this with me. I think it's so important uh, preparing the ground ahead of time before doing deliverance. Mm -hmm. So weakening the spirits we talk about here, and I think binding and loosing uh, helps prepare the ground Correct. for deliverance. It's kind of like plowing. Plowing, yeah, preparing that soil. Yes. So, all right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll have another one next week. We're gonna talk about uh, different things on this, I guess it's like a little podcast, I don't know what to call it. Um, remember, we have services here in person Tuesday night. We do Steps to Freedom, the Miracle List. We're meeting every Tuesday right now for the next 11 weeks. We meet at 6.30 p.m. Also, Rick has a Zoom deliverance um, called Steps of Deliverance. And you can e email him at gmail.com, Steps of Deliverance, for the code. Also, we have in-person services Thursday and Friday nights at 7 o'clock. And then if you check our calendar page, we have some special events. Uh, mark your calendar for February 18th. I'll be doing my next seminar, and it's on emotional deception. All right, so thanks for watching. Bye.